Brandon Schulman from DJI, who is really uh, setting, uh, helping DJI set policy uh, globally for, for drones and SUAS, and we just finished a panel discussion. Brandon, one of the interesting things that you mentioned that, that we see going on every day across the United States is the state legislatures and some of the local municipalities starting to come up with their own sets of regulations and rules and, and um, in some civil, some, some criminal. You mentioned it on your panel today. What is the strategy that DJI and the industry is taking on some of these efforts? Uh, well, we've done a couple of things uh, in, in places where we think there needs to be a, a strong industry-wide response. We've worked together with our industry allies, including in associations like the Consumer Technology Association, AUVSI, Small UAV Coalition, uh, to, to inform lawmakers about what the technology can do and to try to uh, achieve a, a balanced and reasonable outcome. In some cases, we've had to advocate for things like veto of, of some of the legislation. I, I think what we also see is a, a real chance to empower uh, the operators, the, the users of the technology to go to their own communities to introduce the technology to the lawmakers either in advance of these bills coming up or even when they're pending or coming up through the committee to, to show up and, and testify, explain who they are, what they do, how they're using the technology in beneficial ways. So it's really a, a, a two-pronged approach. Yes, we have uh, the formal you know, lobbying type response when needed, but I think it's also very effective to see people go to their own uh, elected leaders and, and just talk about the technology. Yeah, and it is. It's, uh, you know, like every single level of this industry, education seems to be the, the, the dominant effort and, and the most necessary effort in terms of getting people to understand in this instance, what they're regulating. And I think that at a state and local level, there's a tremendous amount of confusion and lack of information about what they're doing. They, they have people who are concerned about privacy, all of a sudden they rush to try and get some sort of privacy rule in place. And so uh, the drone operators do seem to be a key part of this equation because there's a lot more of them than there are of DJI. <laughs> Well, that, that's for sure, and I, I've seen it. It's very effective. I, I've gone to meetings with state legislative staff or even city staff. I testified uh, in the New York City uh, hearings recently. There are three bills pending there. Uh, and it was extremely effective to just show up with a phantom and say, here's the drone, this is what you're regulating. A lot of these lawmakers have not necessarily seen it, uh, even, even just uh, in person in a room, let alone seen one flying. Uh, you know, I think if you're going to go out and do a flight demonstration, you have to do it very carefully. Make right. sure you understand the technology and, and your experience. You wouldn't want to do something uh, embarrassing. Uh, but even just to show up uh, in the office and say, you know, with, with a backpack with the drone and say, here's the drone that I use and let me just kind of show you how it works. Here's a screenshot of an image I took of the beautiful foliage in town. Right. And, and explain, like, how these things are used. It sort of demystifies it. There's a lot of just abstract presumptions about what a drone is and and I think that leads to the privacy related legislation and and a lot of the other things that right are. and this public perception issue is key right because you know, you do get that you know that very vocal minority that always want to shoot the drone out of the sky right and you get it every time you post something on Facebook there's you know there's that one person and they seem to be the loudest voice, but what is DJI seeing in terms of the public perception of drones? Are we starting to turn the corner from some of this um, media hype about the, the bad things that occur and start to move more towards, you know what, maybe these, these are really going to be a positive influence on society? I think it, it's gone in waves. Um, th there have always been the positive stories. I think, I think, you know, to the extent I see them, I, I put them on Twitter. Right. Um, and and we've got a collection of those. If you go to our DJI stories uh, section on our videos, we've got some amazing stories of, of uh, fire response, search and rescue, humanitarian crisis response in Nepal. Just the, the list goes on and on, and, and you know, virtually every day I hear a good story. Um, you know, unfortunately, the media is driven by you know negative headlines, getting getting attra you know attracting clicks or, or views, and I think that's just going to be that's true of any technology and any sort of thing that's hard to understand. I don't I don't know that it's getting better or worse. I think it's just sort of always there, and that's why it's so important when there are good stories, bring bring them to us. Let us know what you're doing. Uh, you know, if you if you went out and you found a lost dog, even right. something like that. You know, we can help bring attention to that because we have good media connections. Right. What would be your advice to, to drone operators who are operating under Section 333 in terms of on the, on, the, on the policy side? What should they be doing 
to make their circumstance better, to improve their circumstance uh, in, in the world. I think if you're a business uh, and, and you're, you're, you're operating drones uh, in connection with that, uh, you absolutely have to go and meet your local elected representatives. The, gr the greatest threat to, to that type of operator is not the federal government right now, it's what the city, uh, county, or state might do with drones, including regulating or adding layers of permitting or registration on top of what already exists. Right. And those, many of those businesses are small, they're using a Phantom or an Inspire, and the last thing they want is more of a, of a cost associated with, with going out and doing something beneficial. So very important if you're a company, uh, go out and meet, you know, who, who's your elected representative for your district? Who's your state senator, your state uh, assembly member? If you don't know them and you haven't invited them to the office, I think you're, you're missing an opportunity to forestall legislation that's much harder to pull back. Once that bill is written and it's working its way up the committee, someone has already invested time and effort in writing it, and it's harder to talk them down from it. If you proactively reach out, that's, that's the best thing you can do right now. And uh, legal challenges take a lot of time, and they do not help you in the interim in most instances.